The secret network above your head. Right now, as you walk to your car or grab your morning coffee, there's a surveillance system tracking your every move. It's not a satellite, it's not your phone, it's sitting on the power line above your head, and it knows your face better than your own mother does. Scientists just fed thousands of hours of crow sounds into an advanced AI system. They expected to hear random animal noise. Instead, the computer started detecting something that made the researchers question everything we thought we knew about intelligence on Earth. The AI wasn't just hearing sounds, it was decoding a language. And what these birds have been saying about you is going to change how you see the world forever. When machines hear what we cannot. The research team had a simple goal. They wanted to see if artificial intelligence could sort crow calls into basic categories. Food calls here, danger calls there, standard stuff. But within days of processing the data, the AI's output started showing patterns that shouldn't exist in any animal communication system. The computer was finding syntax. In human language, syntax is what makes the dog chase the cat different from cat the chase dog. One carries meaning, the other is nonsense. We've always assumed animal calls were just emotional outbursts, a bark of excitement, a hiss of fear. But the AI was detecting grammatical structures that rivaled human language complexity. Then came the breakthrough that sent chills through the research lab. The AI isolated what they called the red hat sequence, a specific combination of sounds that occurred when a man wearing a red baseball cap walked through the park. The frequencies, the pitch variations, the precise spacing between notes, it all formed a unique acoustic signature. Three days later, when the same man returned, the same crow made the identical sound pattern. Interesting, but not shocking. Dogs recognize their owners, too. But here's where reality took a sharp turn into the impossible. A week later, a completely different crow, one that had never encountered this man, produced the exact same sound sequence when he walked by. The implications hit the researchers like a thunderbolt. The first crow hadn't just made a noise. It had created a name. It had transmitted specific identifying information to other crows who had never seen this person. The AI confirmed this sound pattern was never used for anyone else. It was a proper noun in crow language, the database in the sky. As the AI dove deeper into the data, the findings became increasingly unsettling. These weren't just reactive communications. The computer detected complex sound sequences that occurred before events happened. Crows were gathering, exchanging information, and then executing coordinated behaviors based on those conversations. The analysis revealed something that should make every human pause. We are the primary subject of their discussions. The AI identified distinct categories for different types of humans. Human with stick triggered entirely different vocalizations than human with food. They weren't just seeing us as a single species threat or opportunity. They were cataloging our individual behaviors, our tools, our intentions. But it goes deeper than simple identification. The AI detected emotional markers attached to these human-specific calls. Some were neutral descriptors, many were negative, a few were positive. Your reputation in the crow world isn't just about whether you're dangerous, it's about your entire behavioral profile. The most disturbing discovery? These vocal signatures persist across generations. The AI found patterns repeating year after year, with older birds apparently teaching younger birds about specific humans. Your grandfather might have thrown rocks at crows 50 years ago, and the local murder still remembers. You inherited more than his eyes. You inherited his criminal record in the avian world. Hardware for intelligence. How can a bird with a brain the size of a walnut possess such sophisticated communication? For decades, scientists dismissed bird intelligence because they lack the wrinkled cerebral cortex that makes human brains so distinctive. No cortex meant no complex thought, or so we believed. But evolution had other plans. Birds developed a structure called the pallium. And when researchers finally looked closely, they discovered something remarkable. The neurons in a crow's brain are packed so densely that pound for pound they match the processing power of primate brains. We've been measuring intelligence with the wrong ruler all along. New Caledonian crows proved this beyond doubt. These birds don't just use tools, they manufacture them. Researchers watched in amazement as these crows selected specific pandanus leaves. 
Then carefully cut them in a stepped pattern to create serrated edges perfect for extracting insects from crevices. This isn't instinct, it's engineering. The water displacement experiments shattered any remaining doubts. When presented with a narrow tube containing floating food just out of reach, crows were given access to heavy stones and light styrofoam pieces. A creature operating on instinct would try everything. But the crows? They examined both options, then systematically selected only the heavy stones, dropping them one by one to raise the water level. They understood density, displacement, and cause and effect relationships. In another test, crows solved multi-step puzzles that required using tools to access other tools to finally reach food. They created mental maps of mechanical relationships just by observation. They weren't just reacting to their environment, they were analyzing it, understanding it, and manipulating it to achieve specific goals. The Grudge That Spans Generations in 2006, researcher John Marsluff at the University of Washington designed an experiment that would reveal just how personal crow intelligence could become. He donned a caveman mask and captured seven crows for tagging and research. The birds were released unharmed, but they didn't forget. When Marsluff wore the caveman mask on campus, those seven crows mobbed him with aggressive calls and dive-bombing attacks. When he wore a control mask, a Dick Cheney mask, the crows ignored him completely. They could distinguish between individual human faces with perfect accuracy. But here's where it gets genuinely frightening. Within weeks, crows that had never been captured began attacking the caveman mask. The number grew from 7 to 20 to 40. Five years later, when most of the original birds had died, their descendants still attacked that specific mask on sight. The crows had done something we thought only humans could do. They had described a face using vocal communication. They had transmitted specific visual information about a threat to birds that had never seen it. The AI analysis confirms this perfectly, showing distinct vocal patterns that encode facial features and threat levels. This means every interaction you have with a crow is being recorded, evaluated, and potentially broadcast to the network. Change your clothes, dye your hair, grow a beard, it doesn't matter. Your facial structure is encoded in their collective memory. Move across town, across the state, even across the country, and the network moves faster than you do. Courts, funerals, and justice. The AI analysis revealed something even more profound than language. It revealed culture. When a crow dies, the flock doesn't simply disperse, they gather in what can only be described as a funeral. One bird discovers the body and issues a specific call. Then silence falls as dozens of crows assemble in the surrounding trees. Scientists initially interpreted this as grief, but the AI detected something more complex. During these gatherings, crows produce low-frequency vocalizations that appear to encode information about the cause of death. They're not just mourning, they're conducting a forensic investigation, gathering data about threats to share with the living. Even more remarkably, crows hold what researchers call crow courts. When a bird violates social norms, stealing food from younger birds or breaking established hierarchies, the flock surrounds the offender. They vocalize in specific patterns, sometimes pecking at the transgressor, sometimes driving it into exile. They enforce justice. This judicial system extends to humans. The AI found that crows distinguish between a human carrying a stick casually and one carrying it as a weapon. They can read intent in body language, differentiating between a hunter scanning the trees and a hiker enjoying nature. Walk outside with a broom to sweep and they remain calm. Walk outside with the same broom intending to strike at them and they're gone before you can raise your arm. But it's not all prosecution. Humans who regularly feed crows often receive gifts, shiny objects, colorful items, even coins. The AI identified specific gift-giving vocalizations that accompany these exchanges. They understand reciprocity. They engage in cross-species trade, exchanging loyalty and information for resources. The network awakens. The AI study mapped crow vocalizations geographically and discovered something that rewrites our understanding of animal communication. Crows have dialects. A New York crow sounds distinctly different from a London crow. 
But specific words, like warnings about new threats or locations of food sources, spread across these dialects like viral information. A new call pattern might emerge in suburban Chicago. Six months later, that exact acoustic signature appears in St. Louis, then Kansas City, then Denver. Information hops from flock to flock, creating an analog internet that spans continents. When a new threat emerges, a specific type of trap or hunting method, knowledge of that threat spreads faster than the threat itself. They're not starting from zero each generation. They're building on accumulated knowledge, standing on the shoulders of their ancestors. Every crow born today inherits a vast database of information about humans, threats, opportunities, and survival strategies. The silence that speaks volumes. In the final weeks of the AI study, something unprecedented happened. The data stream suddenly fractured. Crow vocalizations shifted dramatically, adopting new patterns and rhythms never before recorded. The AI's confidence in its translations plummeted. The machine that had been successfully decoding crow language was suddenly listening to incomprehensible noise. Some researchers proposed a chilling theory. The crows had noticed the hidden microphones, the cameras, the unusual behavior of humans who normally would chase them away but now stood frozen, observing and recording. They realized they were under surveillance. The shift in their language might be intentional encryption. Upon discovering that their communication was being decoded, they changed the cipher. The birds that solve physics problems and remember faces for decades had potentially recognized they were test subjects and adapted their behavior accordingly. If true, this represents a cognitive leap that challenges our entire understanding of consciousness and intelligence. The crows haven't stopped communicating, they've secured their channel. The noise the AI records now might be deliberate interference while real information passes through methods we haven't discovered yet. We're no longer invisible observers studying simple creatures. The subjects have become aware of the experiment. They know we're listening, and they've taken their conversation underground. The power dynamic has fundamentally shifted. Living under their watch. So what does this mean for you walking under those power lines tomorrow morning? Every crow you pass isn't just a bird, it's a node in a vast intelligence network. Your face, your habits, your reputation, it's all being processed and shared in a language we've only begun to crack. That crow on your fence isn't just looking for food. It's potentially updating your file, noting changes in your routine, evaluating your threat level, deciding whether you deserve a warning call or a gift. You exist in their social network as surely as you exist on Facebook, except you never signed up and you can't delete your account. The next time you hear crows calling in your neighborhood, remember, you're not hearing random noise. You're hearing a conversation about your world, your neighbors, possibly about you. They know which houses have dogs, which humans carry weapons, who feeds them, and who threatens them. They're mapping our society from above, creating an oral history that outlasts our memories. And now that they know we're listening, the game has changed entirely. We're not the only intelligence on this planet capable of language, culture, and strategic thinking. We share our cities with another species that watches, remembers, and judges. They've been taking notes on humanity for generations, and they've recently decided to encrypt their findings. What are they planning now that they know we know? What strategies are they developing in their secured communications? The crows haven't stopped talking, they've just stopped letting us understand. And that silence might be the most articulate statement of all. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.